Well, you have heard the, some great speeches today from Swamiji, from Tapanji, of course from my old friend, now old friend. I mean the old means I've known him for now, which is a period in, in quite great detail. Raji Madhotra and uh, of course uh, Kalyan Vishwanathan been in touch with him for quite some time and uh, my host friend Prakash Rao and friends. Uh, I'll concentrate on the contours of what should be Hindu unity. We can get together as Hindus, that's not difficult. We do. In Kumbh Mela, one lakh, one crore people collect, collect together. <laughs> no government advertisement, no invitation, no subsidy, nothing. But one lakh people turn up. There's never a law and order problem. They don't even report thefts when that Kumbh Mela takes place. But all the Hindus come there for their personal salvation, not for bonding with other Hindus. We go to the temples for the same reasons, not for being with other Hindus in the temple, but for propositioning the God for something. So, the, I am not talking about Hindu unity like a railway platform where people collect together. I am talking about a Hindu mindset. You must think like Hindus some part of the time. I'm not saying on a daily basis, for 24 hours a day, you should think the only thinking of the Hindu cause. But I am saying that there are some issues which come up. And there you must bond as Hindus. It's an enormous power. We are, whatever the census results may be, not less than 80%. And if half of that, maybe 40%, vote as one, we'll get two-thirds majority in parliament. But we don't vote as one. We at most will vote 15 20 percent as one, well, and that too on special occasions. So, therefore, we have to construct by appealing to the mind of the people because today the battle is in the mind, it is not the battle of invaders coming with weapons to, uh, to conquer your country. It is now the invasion of the mind which has to be liberated. And that's why I admire Rajiv Malhotra. He is not a historian, and thank God for that, because he would have been brainwashed by now if he was. <laughs> He's a man who made a lot of money, one day threw it all away, and went back to the original documentation. He did not take the great names and their views and then recycle them, like most Indian intellectuals do. But he went back to the original. And that's what we need to do to know who we are before we can become a corporate Hindu, become of corporate Hindu psychology. We must first know who we are. Some people say, why should Hindu feel secure? There's such a large number, 1.2, uh, nearly 1 billion people. Well, numbers by themselves are not enough. You can have a thousand goats standing at one place, and one tiger comes, the majority is with the goats. But who will run? The goat will run. They will not run together, they will run helter-skelter. And the tiger will pick which is the juiciest one of them all, and slay it, and eat it up. 
nor strength is enough. You can have five lions in a cage in a circus, one thin ringmaster who tells these lions, get up, climb up on the stool. They'll all climb up on the stool. Each one of them is strong enough to kill that ringmaster in the, inside the cage. But they obey him because the mind has been captured from when these lions were pups. Today we Hindus are like that. Partly goat, partly lion of the circus. <laughs> now, what explains why we are silent when 500,000 Kashmiri Pandits have been driven out of Kashmir and are living in refugee camps since 1989, 22 years. Refugee camp in your own country. I think we have set up a world record. Somebody should send it to the Guinness Book of World Record. Only country where their own people live in a refugee camp in their own country. Nobody talks about it. Governments have come, governments have gone. Unfortunately, when I came into government, we didn't last very long. And if the problem had not started really, I became a minister in 1990. This happened in 89. And by the 500,000 people, it was only after 1995. They all came up. Article 370 of the Constitution says that it, in the argument of Jawaharlal Nehru was that it is required to keep the demographic nature and structure of Kashmir intact. Otherwise, others from India will go and settle there. Well, that means that article also applies for changing the demographic composition by driving out the Hindus. So today I have a right to restore the demographic composition that has existed at the time when Kashmir acceded to India. I can't ask the Kashmiri Pandits to go back, they will be butchered. But I can ask uh, ex-servicemen, we have got one crore ex-servicemen of which Half of them are still fighting fit because our servicemen retire at a very early age of 40, 45. Many of them are bored sitting at home. They are ready to, to sign up, give them weapons, give them money and say go and settle down in Kashmir. If they send you or send out 500,000, we will send out double that number. <laughs> Kashmiri Pandits had residences which from which they were forcibly driven out. So you can take that address also and ask the servicemen, this is your house now, don't, don't <laughs> occupy it. I have a Janda Party unit in Srinagar which is, a, which is a, you know, 100% Muslim. And uh, when I, and they all speak about Kashmir being part of India. Courageous, brave people. My party went there. There are not many. There are about 24 people. But when I had a meeting with the women of Kashmir, Muslim women, they told me that we don't want to be part of Pakistan. We'd be quite happy to be part of India. Because we know what our fate is when these mullahs take over. But the propaganda which is being unleashed against us is that the Hindus will never fight and after much bloodshed they will concede. They conceded Pakistan, they will concede the independence of Kashmir also. The day it becomes clear that a leadership has come into the center of India which says not an inch of Kashmir will be parted with we will pay any price for it. That day we will all be with you and not with Pakistan. And Kashmir
Kashmir is whose? It is ours. I don't need any document for it, although I have a document. That document is the instrument of accession. How was Pakistan created? 1947, June. The British Parliament passed a law because there was no Pakistan at that time. They passed a law saying that because there are Muslims who don't want to live with Hindus under Hindu majority, those Muslims who don't want to live, we will create a separate country for them and that, be, that is to be called Pakistan. And the resolution got passed. They also said, because the British only controlled two-thirds of United India. One third was still under the Rajas, even though they had regions, the British had placed regions there. The Mysore Raja, the Nizam of Hyderabad, uh, you know, the, there were about 600 Rajas. And the British declared them as independent countries, including Kashmir. 